So, the reason why it took a little bit long to start the stream was because I need to find this clip that I remember checking out, um, which was pretty incredible to kind of hear because it's from a recent episode with Tom Segura on Joe Rogan's show, right? And he said something really interesting. And I thought that was incredibly lacking in self-awareness considering what, um, considering Tom Segura's background, right? In terms of his upbringing, in terms of, you know, the job that his dad had and him growing up fairly rich or middle class. It was very interesting how he sort of described his come up and the struggles other kind of comedians have when they kind of come up in the scene. So I found the clip, right? And I found it courtesy of YouTube. So big up this channel, which I'm going to shout out here. It's called JRE Snips and Clips. Obviously, they pulled the clips off from Flipping Joe Rogan, Flipping Podcast. And this is an interesting one because they're speaking about Bert, but then they switch into doing what they usually do and talk about fucking comedians, right? And I feel like Tom makes a very interesting point that I was surprised to hear him say, considering, again, the privilege that he's had in terms of coming up in the scene. So let's just kind of, you know, go on and hear what Tom Segura thinks about people who work like regular jobs and still chasing their dreams, right? Let's hear it. On the movie and yeah. these, these and arenas. That, that festival is a, a, is a huge it's incredible. success. Yeah. Watching him, you know, do these shows in these arenas and seeing these crowds, I'm like, wow. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. wild. It's pretty wild, dude. It is pretty wild. You know, and you go back to him taking that chance and leaving, leaving the travel channel. Yeah, it was a big, uh, it was a big risk on his part, actually, because that's that's the equivalent of because we all knew comics like this, and it was it's a it's just the reality of what it is when you're when you start working as a comedian, and you you have like your circle of friends. There's this a, n a number of them who like as you start to do road gigs and these are low paying i'm not you're not a ticket seller you're just doing these gigs and you're like uh are you gonna do you know some of these gigs and they're like nah like i have this job and and the job provides the you know the consistency and the comfort mm -hmm. it's it's reliable they're like oh i get my paycheck yeah and then what happens is you doing these low like they're making more money than you right because you're doing like the bullshit comic but then like your comedy starts to get better because you're doing stand-up all the time and then you get more opportunities and then they're they go like hey i want to do that but like right. five years have gone by right and you're like yeah but you've been in this day job yes right and then all of a sudden you know you know you're getting opportunities to do tv specials or like comics. they want you to just grab their hand yeah yeah and, and then they take go, them with you on the road what happened you're like well you didn't take the leap yeah you know and bert kind of had that comfort of that tv show yeah it's a good check it's not like it's not a bullshit check it's a good right. it's a good it's on tv yeah. yeah but when when he decided no, no i gotta go make a full leap that was that's a that's a leap you know yeah. that's that's a leap and then it paid off obviously you tremendous my problem with this sort of perspective is that it ridiculously puts into clear HD the issue that most people have with Nepo babies who are sensible. If you're a sensible person, the main issue you have with Nepo babies isn't that they've been lucky in terms of the gene lottery and they've grown up in a family of very influential, successful people and a food that they also want to pursue. That's just a luck of the draw, the gene pool. It's more so that they try and dismiss the, um, the advantages that that gives you in terms of access and in just in terms of just pursuing your dreams. I've always said whenever it comes to the entertainment industry, because I'm kind of pursuing my little side gig dream in the DJing world, when it comes to that sort of field, there is no kind of like one to the top step plan. There is no kind of path to success. It's just binary or there's just a straight line. It doesn't exist. Everyone's road to success is very different and it's kind of full of loads of like peaks and valleys and shit. But for the most part, for the most part, if you tell everybody, talk to everybody in the entertainment industry who works in any type of way, they will tell you that the main kind of, you know, sticking point of trying to succeed in those type of places and those kind of careers is your ability to be somewhat resilient and also your ability to like, weather storms. If you can just hang around long enough for the most part, like I know many of people within the scene that I was part of in terms of sneakers, in terms of streetwear, in terms of fashion, in terms of nightlife, who just hung around long enough. If you can hang around long enough and be in a mix, usually you get rewarded. Usually an opportunity will come your way that you can kind of grab your two hands and sort of show up. But the unfortunate thing is in real life, 
the more you're trying to pursue your dreams, the older you get. So sometimes you have to choose between being able to kind of, you know, pay your rent, you know, look after your family, put food in the table and chase your dreams. You just sometimes in life, you really have to decide one or the other. You don't have the advantage of choosing both. But if, you grow, bro, if, if you're a Nepo baby, for instance, or you're growing up somewhere so, somewhat so privileged, you have the ability to sort of pursue both things. You can take chances. So if you're Tom Segura, it's really disingenuous to kind of, you know, look at the people that maybe had to give up, quote unquote, on their dreams and pursue a real career. Because essentially, Tom has always had the ability to kind of chase his dreams because he grew up in a rich family. His dad was a, I think, I forgot what it was. I think some sort of banker or somebody involved in money or regards. He did really well for himself, amazingly provided for his family. Nothing wrong with that. But that gave him a level of comfort, if not, if not monetarily in the brain which is really important of not worrying about where your next meal is coming, of not having to worry about how you're going to pay rent, of not worrying about how you're going to put gas in the car because you know ultimately daddy's always going to save you. And that's something that people constantly discount, which I don't understand because I'm not somebody that's going to sit here and say, oh, only rich people make it in the creative industry. That's absolutely garbage. I kind of do believe in the adage of like pulling yourself up by a bootstrap to some extent. But let's not be ignorant and say, that some of these people don't have a real leg up advantage in that they're able to try things. You're able to take a chance. Like Bert Crash is a good example also. He is somebody, it's another one that kind of grew up in a somewhat middle class, quote unquote, rich family where you can take chances, where he was able to kind of be in college for like, what, seven plus years. You know what I mean? That doesn't happen with somebody that's just not got money to kind of consistently go into those kind of types of education again and again and again. So all those things kind of account for the time that you can take to kind of pursue your dreams without kind of worrying about quote unquote growing up and I'm not really too sure what it is about these comedians but they really do find it really difficult to kind of grasp that sort of thing they don't understand why that helped they don't get it in the slightest and I'm not really sure why that is because it really is it's not like a make or break thing but it really does help if you're able two essentially in your adult years because a lot of these comedians started comedy you know maybe late 20s early 30s when most of us are basically having to maybe think about you know paying rent maybe getting a mortgage maybe starting a family maybe buying your first car loads of really big like kind of adult life expenses type of things that usually can only be afforded if you have a full-time job for the most part or maybe a really busy part-time job, but you have to commit a bit of time to working for the man, quote unquote. And maybe that's not conducive to having a comedy career, but that's part of the reason why some people aren't able to make it because they just don't have the ability to take chances. And that's the main thing that I really don't understand why these guys don't get that bit. They don't understand that they've had some level of privilege. They've definitely worked hard, but for sure, for sure, that privilege has definitely helped them along the way to try and take the chances that they have in order to get where they are. That's the only thing that kind of really stuck out to me when I watched this clip. I was like, rah, Tom Segura doesn't really get it, does he? He honestly thinks the people he come up with who didn't make it in comedy were just maybe didn't, I don't know, weren't as beasts as him. They weren't as fucking David Goggins as him. They didn't have the same fire as him. No, some of them maybe just, you know, unfortunately or by circumstances, maybe you got somebody pregnant Maybe you found somebody that you wanted to spend your life with or whatever. You had to decide, what am I going to do? Am I going to just be broke forever while chasing this dream, while I had these other responsibilities? Or would I just rather sit down and basically try and work at my career and then pursue the entertainment thing on the side? That's the only thing that's weird because I understand for me, I'm sure if I had the ability to maybe commit essentially everything to flipping DJing, maybe my life would be a lot better. I would maybe be a lot further in that career. Maybe I would be. But for sure, the time that I had to spend out of the flipping nightlife scene and not be around in the mix and not be in the clubs and stuff and be focusing on my career or be focusing on schooling, that for sure may have impacted my way forward. For sure. It's not the main thing, but it definitely impacts some things. But to completely dismiss it is strange. And Nepo Babies do this a lot. Nepo Babies do it a lot where they kind of discount the fact that they're able to kind of take chances. They're able to kind of figure stuff out, go traveling to Europe for a couple of years to find themselves and in turn that companies for completely free and then end up trying making it at the end where most of us don't have the ability. Like even nowadays, I've heard some really horrible things about the internship kind of industry. When I was doing it, 
um, many, 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 many years ago, I had the ability to basically, um, well, you basically got paid your, your, your kind of your travel fare. They looked after you for lunches. They looked after you in terms of your travel fare. And that was basically about it. So it was kind of decent in terms of the kind of return that you got from it. You didn't have to really expense anything out of your pocket except for maybe food. So you get paid your travel usually. And then maybe anything else you have to do in terms of work trips and shit. But everything else got comped. And sometimes on a week, end of the week, you maybe have some stuff, drinks and shit. So it's quite decent. But nowadays I'm hearing some people, you don't even get paid travel. Some people I'm hearing are paying to intern. I'm hearing there's an industry now that exists where some people are paying other people to intern for them or they're doing it for free. They're going there, essentially turning up, working for free, nine to five, five days a week in the hope that in the end of working for free, someone's going to employ them. That's how competitive it's got in that industry. Now imagine who as a fashion student or that's loving fashion at the age between the ages of like 19 and 25 can afford to intern for free at Dior, at Chanel, at Givenchy, at Louis Vuitton. Who can actually afford to do that? That's the, that's just the bad thing about it. Like you're only kind of limiting it to a certain group of people who are kind of like middle class and, you know, and upwards and shit. Everybody else that's trying to make it in that regard can't really do it. So it kind of creates this weird sort of like underclass of people who essentially just have to fight for scraps. Um, but again, you know, I don't really know too much when it comes to this sort of stuff, but I thought that was very, 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 very telling um, how they kind of looked at fucking um, the come up in the comedy scene as if like the guys that kind of dropped out and got a normal job were somewhat failures because they didn't stick with it. Some people had to pay their mortgage, man. Some people had to pay their car note. Some people had just lives to kind of progress. Like, I don't know. It's just what it is, isn't it? It's very, very strange, but hey. <clears throat> what do I know when it comes to that stuff? What do I bloody, bloody know? Um, moving on from that source, so I've quickly went to mention this. Actually, no, let me put these on because these are kind of messing up my head. Let me change my headphones. Bear with me one second. me a little bit I can't hear myself think bear me a second little headphone switch up yo big up Austin Casey I appreciate $15 donation big up Paz. glad to catch a weekday stream <laughs> big up Austin Casey I appreciate you bro one second let me let me replay that so I can hear it properly let's do it one more time big up Austin Casey my G Come on, bro. Replay that thing. Replay that thing. What's happening here? Can we replay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big up Austin Casey. I appreciate you, brother. Big up, Paz. Glad to catch a weekday stream. Yeah, we're back here. Weekdays, weekdays, weekday vibesing. Um, I was getting fucking abused via the Discord. People sending me DMs and telling me to hurry up and put a live show on. People leaving comments on the fucking taz show that i love to do that no one watches saying we don't want this we want the random show harassing me then when i put the live stream scheduled up people were saying i wasn't gonna be here and i was honey dicking and i was in some sort of drug hole somewhere i was getting abused everywhere so i had to kind of comply and you know come down from my fucking perch down to the mandems you know what i mean <laughs> and the galden so big up everybody out there appreciate all of you 